There are stars, and then there are impossibilities that happen to burn. Stevenson 218 belongs to that latter kind. In the crowded heart of the Milky Way, within a loose cluster of red supergiants called Stevenson 2, there glows a single ember so vast that if it replaced our sun, its surface would reach beyond Saturn's orbit. Light from it left centuries ago, crossing 19,000 light years to reach us, and even after that journey it remains one of the faintest smudges in the night sky, proof that enormity does not guarantee brilliance. Astronomers classify it as a red hypergiant, a title that sounds mythic because it is. Stars like this are living paradoxes, so huge they distort our equations, so unstable they die young. Stevenson 218 stretches theory to the breaking point, reminding us that the universe still writes its own rules. We cannot see it with the naked eye, yet when its spectrum first appeared on astronomers' screens, jaws literally dropped. Every absorption line shouted massive, swollen, dying. It was a reminder that our sun, modest and stable, is not the standard of stars, it is the exception. The story of Stevenson 218 begins not with a telescope orbiting Earth, but with dusty photographic plates in the mid-20th century. In 1990, Charles Bruce Stevenson, surveying the Milky Way for obscured clusters, catalogued an unusual grouping of luminous red stars in the constellation Scutum. The group became known as Stevenson II, and one of its members quickly stood apart. Infrared observations showed a star drowning in its own light, its brightness dimmed by interstellar dust. Later measurements with Gaia, Very Large Telescope, and ALMA confirmed the astonishing scale, a radius roughly 2,150 times that of the Sun. To put that in perspective, one Stevenson 2's 18 could contain 10 billion suns by volume. Light takes more than eight hours to travel from one side of its photosphere to the other. Its surface temperature, only about 3,200 Kelvin, is cooler than a light bulb filament. Yet its area is so enormous that it outshines thousands of ordinary stars. When astronomers computed its luminosity, the numbers strained credibility. Was the distance wrong? Was the dust thicker than assumed? After repeated corrections, the conclusion persisted. Stevenson 218 truly is the largest known star, so big that it flirts with the theoretical maximum size a star can possess before its outer layers escape into space. Imagine standing if one could stand at the edge of this giant. The surface would not be a solid boundary, but a vague, turbulent zone where gas constantly lifts and falls where convection cells the size of planets roil upward like slow explosions. The air, if we can call it that, moves at tens of kilometers per second, blowing outward as a stellar wind so dense that it carries away mass equivalent to Earth every few months. Through telescopes, this outflow appears as a faint halo of glowing dust, a veil that both conceals and defines the star. Stevenson 218 is dying in slow motion, Every gust of its stellar wind is a fragment of itself, a promise of what is to come. Eventually, the core will collapse, the outer layers will recoil, and for a few brief weeks, the entire galaxy will know where it lived, because its death will be visible even in daylight on Earth. We are witnessing not youth, but grandeur at the edge of entropy. The universe has built a star too large to last. Every giant begins as something deceptively ordinary. Stevenson 218 was once a main sequence star, fusing hydrogen in its core like our sun, just faster, hotter, and far more recklessly. It likely began with more than 40 solar masses, enough to live gloriously and die young. Stars of that magnitude have short tempers. The more mass a star carries, the higher the pressure in its core and the faster it burns its fuel. What for the sun is a 10 billion year meditation, for Stevenson 218, was a few million year sprint. As the hydrogen ran out, the core contracted under gravity, igniting helium, then carbon, neon, and oxygen. Each new element fused at higher temperatures, driving the outer layers to swell. The star expanded, not gently, but violently, inflating until gravity barely held its atmosphere in place. In that precarious balance between outward radiation pressure and inward collapse, a hypergiant is born. This stage is temporary, a bright, doomed pause before the inevitable. 
Stevenson 218 exists in a momentary equilibrium, a candle flame that has grown taller than the candle itself. Astrophysicists like to quantify the unthinkable, but Stevenson 218 challenges even their vocabulary. There is a theoretical limit to how large a star can grow before its gravity can no longer hold on to its outer layers, the Eddington limit, named for Sir Arthur Eddington, who first balanced radiation pressure against gravitational pull. Stevenson 218 lives dangerously close to that boundary, any larger, and it would tear itself apart. In fact, it may already be doing so, bleeding matter into the surrounding cluster through a slow, unstoppable wind. Observations show that the star's luminosity hovers near half a million times that of the Sun. Its density, however, is almost unimaginable. The entire mass of dozens of suns spread across a sphere wider than the orbit of Saturn. The outer layers are so diffuse that an airplane could, in theory, fly through them, though it would instantly vaporize. In computer simulations, such stars are nearly impossible to stabilize. Tiny changes in opacity, rotation, or convection can cause them to pulsate, shedding shells of gas that drift away like smoke. Stevenson 218 is not a sphere so much as a breathing cloud, perpetually on the verge of disintegration. The equations tell us it should not last long, perhaps another few hundred thousand years, an eye blink in stellar time. After that, its core will implode, triggering a supernova so vast it could seed new generations of stars. The universe, as always, consumes itself to continue itself. Stevenson 218 does not stand alone in its enormity. Astronomers have long been fascinated by red supergiants, those swollen relics of massive stars approaching their end. Betelgeuse in Orion once held the title of largest known star. Its radius is roughly a thousand times that of the Sun. VY Canis Majoris, another contender, extends perhaps 1,500 solar radii. But Stevenson 218 surpasses them all not by a small margin, but by a cosmic gulf. If Betelgeuse were a city, Stevenson 218 would be a continent. These comparisons are not just competitions of size, they are windows into stellar evolution. By studying such extremes, astronomers can understand how mass and temperature sculpt a star's fate, which become neutron stars which collapse into black holes and which simply disperse into dust. In the cluster Stevenson 2, Many red supergiants orbit together, each a dying titan, each shedding its identity into the same cosmic sea. It is, in some ways, a graveyard of giants, and Stevenson 218 is its reigning monarch. To peer at it through a telescope is to see time itself unraveling, the final fiery chapters of stellar life written in slow motion. Every massive star writes its ending in fire. Stevenson 218 is no exception, only the scale of its finale will defy comparison. When fusion in its core can no longer resist gravity, the balance that holds the star together will fail. The inward crush will be sudden and absolute. In less than a second, the core will shrink from a sphere the size of Jupiter to a city-sized object denser than atomic nuclei. That collapse will rebound in an explosion so powerful that for a few days, Stevenson 218 will outshine its entire cluster from Earth, 19,000 light-years away, it will blaze brighter than the full moon. Its light will travel across the spiral arm, passing through clouds of gas that its own ancestors once enriched. In that moment, the universe will do what it always does, recycle. Heavy elements forged in the star's heart will be hurled into space. Carbon, oxygen, silicon, iron. Every atom in your blood once began in such an ending. Stevenson 218's death will write the ingredients for future worlds. If the remaining core is massive enough, gravity will win completely, forming a black hole, a region from which not even light can escape. A singularity born from a star too large to remain whole. When it happens, we will not see it immediately. The light is still centuries from us, but it has either already occurred or is imminent in cosmic terms. Somewhere in the Milky Way, a giant may already be gone and we are only waiting for the news to arrive. The death of a star is not an end, but a transfer of energy. The nebula left behind by Stevenson 218 
will expand for tens of thousands of years, sculpted by magnetic fields and shock waves, glowing in infrared and X-ray light. Over time, that cloud will cool and fragment. Gravity will begin its slow patient work again, gathering dust into knots that will ignite as new stars. Some will host planets. On one of those worlds, perhaps in a few billion years, something will wonder about the light of its parent star, just as we do now. Astronomers call this cycle stellar nucleosynthesis, but the poetry is simpler. Life is the universe remembering itself. Every cell on Earth contains atoms that were once part of giants like Stevenson 218. When it dies, we will inherit more. The cluster around it, Stevenson 2, will slowly disperse as its members drift apart. The ghosts of its red supergiants will fade into the galactic disk, their stories written not in myths, but in matter. The galaxy is a cemetery that gardens itself. Even now, measuring Stevenson 218 is an act of humility. We cannot visit it, cannot photograph its surface directly. Everything we know comes from spectra, light spread thin, decoded through mathematics. Astronomers use parallax, luminosity, temperature and distance to estimate its size. But every parameter carries uncertainty. Dust absorbs light, distances shift, models evolve yet even the most conservative calculations confirm its enormity. If our sun were a marble, Stevenson 218 would be a sphere the size of a skyscraper. Its photosphere could swallow the orbits of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and most of Saturn without noticing, and yet it is fragile. A single perturbation could trigger collapse. Its life expectancy is a whisper against the backdrop of cosmic time. When we study such an object, we are reminded that science is not about control, but about understanding the limits of understanding. The numbers we derive are not answers. They are gestures toward a truth too large to hold. Stevenson 218 exists at that threshold, a real thing that feels mythic, a star so vast that to describe it requires both physics and metaphor. Stevenson 218 is not just a star. It is a lesson in perspective. Its enormity forces us to confront scales that defy everyday intuition. We measure distance in light years, size in solar radii, mass in multiples of the sun. But these abstractions struggle to capture the experience of such extremity. Imagine standing on Earth, looking at the sun. Now imagine replacing the sun with a sphere so large that Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars and Jupiter would be swallowed in its embrace. Even that mental exercise barely touches the reality of a star like Stevenson 218. Scale is not just physical, it is temporal. Red hypergiants burn through their fuel in a cosmic heartbeat. While the Milky Way rotates, centuries pass as if in seconds for these giants. Their lives are brief, furious, and incandescent. In their fleeting existence, they teach patience and humility simultaneously. To observe them is to acknowledge our own smallness, not with despair, but with gratitude. The universe is vast, and we are privileged to witness even a fraction of its extremes. For all its size and power, Stevenson 218 is fragile. Its outer layers float on a delicate balance of gravity and radiation. One imbalance, one perturbation, and the star will shed mass in a violent pulse, or collapse entirely into a supernova. There is a strange poetry in this. The largest objects are often the most vulnerable. A star too large cannot endure. A life too intense cannot last. Stevenson 218's existence is a reminder that power and impermanence are intertwined. This fragility extends metaphorically to humanity. We are small, transient and vulnerable in a galaxy of extremes. Yet our capacity to observe, understand and reflect allows us to connect with cosmic phenomena far beyond our own scale. In that way, we are like the star itself, ephemeral observers in a vast, dynamic universe. In the end, the story of Stevenson 218 is a story of witness. We may never touch it, visit it, or see its surface directly, yet through light and mathematics, we know it exists. We have measured its size, temperature, and mass. We have traced its evolution and predicted its inevitable end. This knowledge carries both humility and wonder. 
It reminds us that the universe is capable of extremes our minds can scarcely imagine. It demonstrates that life, even on a human scale, is nested within a hierarchy of phenomena so vast that our everyday concerns shrink in comparison. And yet, through observation, imagination and reflection, we find kinship. We recognize patterns, cycles and the poetic resonance of birth, life and death across scales. Stevenson 218 will one day collapse, scatter its elements and seed future stars. A cosmic reminder that destruction begets creation and scale does not diminish significance. To witness it is to see the universe writing in letters larger than entire planets, a story of energy, time and matter. And in reading that story, we find both perspective and inspiration, the quiet thrill of knowing that even at scales beyond comprehension, the universe invites us to wonder.